Welcome to Reverb Reduction in Spectralayers Pro 7. I'm going to take you through the process and show you how it works. This will get you kickstarted so that you can do the process yourself and get great results. We'll even explore a few alternatives for using the process as an effect in ways that might surprise you and inspire you in your own creative sound design work. In the Layers panel, I have a dry vocal layer and then a second layer. Same thing, but with a reverb applied to it. We'll process the second layer and use the dry layer as a reference. Let's solo the dry vocal layer and listen to what it sounds like. If it knocks me down, I get right back up. And here is the layer with the reverb applied to it. If it knocks me down, I get right back up. Okay, let's get started with the process. Make sure that you have the target layer selected. Move to the top menu bar and select Process, then move through the menu and select Reverb Reduction. The dialog box appears. Here, you'll find controls for scanning the sound to evaluate its reverb content, visualizing the reverb tail, fine-tuning the algorithm, preview, bypass, and more. We'll go through all the controls in this video. Let's start by clicking the Analyze button. Now you can see a visual representation of what the algorithm has detected as reverb. The rectangle is divided into 500 millisecond segments and the vertical axis shows reverb amplitude. We want to achieve the most artifact-free process possible. These controls will definitely help us do that. And right here in this dialog, we can audition different settings as much as we need to before committing to the process. I'm shaping the process starting with the reverb threshold control. Here, I'm adjusting the red threshold line downward until it meets the top of the reverb representation in the graph. Now I'm using the reverb length control to reach a little bit farther out into the tail. I'm going to leave the reduction ratio set at 75% for now. This is basically a function of amplitude, or how hard the process will cut into the source audio. Okay, let's preview the process. If it knocks me down, I get right back up. I can bypass the process and go back to the unprocessed sound without leaving the dialogue. If it knocks me down, I get right back up. Here I can reduce the signal and audition only the content that will be removed when I commit to the process. It sounds like this. If I click OK now, then the result will sound just like this. That is, reverb only. Of course, that's not typically going to be what you want, but the option is there in case you ever need it, like maybe for sound design or for making certain soundstage effects designed to create a sense of distance or to intentionally obscure a source. At the current settings, let's see what happens if I go for increased reduction. Here, I'm switching back to reduce reverb before I audition these settings. If it knocks me down, I get right back up. Well, as you might have guessed, this produces more artifacts. But the process works fast, so you can run through lots of different options to find the one that works best for your needs. I'm going to keep the same settings for a moment. Now, I'm going back to the reverb length control. What do you think will happen if I pull this control back to a time length that's a lot shorter than the actual reverb tail of the source? I'll preview this, and we'll see what happens. If it knocks me down, I get right back up. This is a great way to see the algorithm in action. It works smoothly and reaches out into the reverb tail as far as you need it to go. Note, this effect can also be used in sound design as a type of spectral gating effect. Much like the imprinting processes in Spectralayers Pro 7, the results can have a texture that's distinctly different from their traditional counterparts, such as compression and sidechain compression. Okay, now I'm going to go back to some conservative settings that will give me a fair amount of reverb reduction with minimal artifacts. I'll preview the process once. If it knocks me down, I get right back up. And then finally click OK and commit to the process. If it knocks me down, I get right back up. One more time, the original source. If it knocks me down, I get right back up. And also one more time, the dry vocal reference. If it knocks me down, I get right back up. And that's it. 
Reverb Reduction in Spectralayers Pro 7. Thanks for taking the time to discover how the reverb reduction process works. This video was made using the standalone application, but remember, you can do it non-destructively in ARA mode right on the Cubase and Nuendo timelines. This level of workflow integration makes using Spectral Layers Pro 7 the perfect choice for repair and restore operations, post-production sweetening, and creative sound design. We hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Spectral Layers Pro 7 delivers audio empowerment. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the Steinberg channel.